Friday. Uh, happy May 8th here with the Albuquerque Esmato Chamber of Commerce. Thank you guys for your patience. Uh, we're pretty um, excited because today we got to uh, let our spread our wings and fly by ourselves. So our little uh, Wizard of Oz behind the curtain, Miss Angelique, um, did some troubleshooting and here we are live. So we appreciate you guys hanging in there. And remember, if you missed the uh, webinar or if you uh, had to leave because you thought we weren't going to be live, it's over. Okay, you can always catch this series at the Albuquerque Hispano Chamber of Commerce website, which is ahcnm.org. Click on the COVID link at the top, and you're going to see a couple of different series. We are in the middle of our New Mexico Mutual series. So thank you to our partners at New Mexico Mutual for um, supporting this series and supporting small business during this time. We appreciate you and your whole team down there. And so uh, today we have a fun topic, fun Friday for sure. We're going to talk about real estate during COVID. And so we are lucky to be joined by uh, the experts in the industry for sure. Uh, Mr. John Lopez, Ms. Carly Quintana, and Ms. Annabelle Romero. And so we're going to get started with them, but I just want to share with you guys a couple of things. First and foremost, uh, always remember that uh, we are out there asking for your um, advice, for your opinions. We're looking for that input. We're working hard to make sure that we are at the forefront of any information that we can get you. And what you need is really important to us. So in order to do that, um, it's either a reach out an email, a text, but what we've been doing is sending out our survey and our survey is five minutes, five questions to small business owners out there. And we're asking what you guys need. And that's how the, set, uh, the webinar series was developed was uh, to find out what you guys needed. And so we are about seven weeks in now um, to this series and we're tackling all kinds of topics. So if you have a topic that you want to hear that you have not seen yet, let us know. Uh, but you can go to our website on the COVID link and click and see all the series. There's a square series and now we're in the New Mexico Mutual series. This series is focused on reopening. What does that look like? Um, as much as we, information we have, we give with you, we give to you. And so we had some requests for real estate. So we thought it would be fun to have uh, the team on today to talk about real estate during COVID and um, how the markets are doing, how percentage rates with refinancing, mortgage information. And so we reached out to some of the people that we know know this industry uh, very, very well. So I'm going to start to uh, my right on the screen, um, the, the, um, the one and only Mr. John Lopez with the John Lopez Realty Group. So John, please introduce yourself yourself hey guys you guys can hear me okay absolutely well i'm john lopez with a cobalt banker and platinum real estate partners i've been doing this for 23 years i'm the immediate past president elected immediate past president for our real estate association out here and uh, i'm super appreciative you called me to be on this i'm super excited and blessed and honored and i'm here to help with whatever i can <clears throat> Annabelle, can you hear me? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Annabelle Romero with Finance of America. I've been in the business for 27 years. I love doing what I do. I'm honored that you chose me to go ahead and help answer some of the questions or give some advice. Um, real estate and mortgage lending is just phenomenal right now. It's a great time to be in the business and things are going to be getting better and better. Thank you. Ms. Coralie. Good morning. I am Coralie Quintana. I am a commercial broker at eXp Realty. And I would just want to say I'm so proud of eXp because we created a digital online platform for real estate offices 10 years ago. And who would have known fast forward that we were all going to be at shelter at home orders. And I work for a company that's already been digital. So I'm super proud of that. Um, and the software and technology that we use to meet online on a daily basis um, will, is available. So I'm grateful for that. And I'm really happy to see all the good things that are happening in the Albuquerque real estate market. So I look forward to talking about that today. Well, we're excited to have all you guys on. Um, there, there has been some random questions uh, lately more in the past couple of weeks, I think as people are getting ready to open, uh, we had some people that were, you know, packing and moving, trying to close on houses. And I think that just brings up some, some questions. So I'm just going to just hop on over to John. We're going to start with you. Let's start with 
um, the, the, the basics. Let's start with what have you guys seen in the last couple months with the trends um, and um, what, what are you doing to look forward to preparing for, um, I, I'm not sure if, if, if real estate's even affected, but you know, we have a lot of businesses that are gonna start reopening and people starting to get back into the groove of whatever that new way of life is gonna be. Um, so let's just start with that, John. Well, you know, the real estate industry, at least here in Albuquerque, I think was very, very lucky. As the world shut down during this uh, global uniqueness is what I call it, because I don't like negativity. Um, but during this global uniqueness, um, we've been blessed. Pretty much most of the brokers that I've worked with have been super busy. In our actual area, we should have had about 4,200 homes on the market. And as of this morning, we have 2016 as of a few hours ago. And then as of detached homes, we only have 1,730 active listings, but this is where it gets scary. If I actually draw a line just around our metropolitan area, our Albuquerque and Rio Rancho area, we only have 1,239 homes for sale. Now think about that. We're the fifth largest state in the nation. We have 680,000 people here. We should have over 4,000 listings and we only have 1,230. You know, I have almost 4,000 agents that are signed up at GAR. So you look at that dynamic and we have a phenomenal market for the agents that are out there working hard because we've got to list houses. And when we list them, if you price them right and they look pretty, they sell super fast. And top of that, NAR just released uh, some pretty <laughs> crazy, crazy stats, but NAR just said that once the stat home order is lifted, they're estimating three out of, out of four potential sellers are preparing to sell their home immediately once the, once the order is lifted. So what's going on is everybody's gearing up right now. They're taking care of their house. They're cleaning it out. They're really focusing on, do I have too much space? Do I have too little space? Uh, you know, I mean, the kids are annoying me, so I need to get a bigger house. Uh, my kids are gone and I'm kind of lonely and I realized I've never gone upstairs. Didn't think about it till these 30, 60 days that I've been at home and I don't want to clean it. So it's time to downsize. And so now we have all this mega data that is coming out for statistics and, and we really are going to understand that there's going to be a big boom. And so to put it all into one big sentence, Albuquerque is about to explode. Go around and count the cranes. That always is representing the economic uh, increase for a community and we've got a lot of cranes coming out here. So we're doing good. So it's funny you bring up the word cranes because, you know, one of the topics that we've planned to tackle is uh, home building, construction, commercial uh, development um, in another webinar, because that is an industry that has been booming and has not been affected by COVID, uh, but now we know why. <laughs> so I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm in shock and those, those stats are great. I'm, I'm taking notes when you see me look down because I like to come back to some of those thoughts. I'm gonna jump over to Coralie because you're on the commercial side of what's happening in our world. And if you could share with us the same thoughts, uh, you know, what was happening over the last couple months and what do you see upcoming? I have to agree with John. Um, on the commercial side, we are seeing some really beautiful growth. So um, we have a few things going for us. Um, we've gotten national attention for the way our governor has handled the COVID outbreak. And because of that, people in colder climates, places like New York that have been hit are going, wow, you guys are doing great in New Mexico. And they're looking at real estate here now. The mayor has said, we're gonna move forward on our construction projects. That's huge um, because then we continue to have the growth. So I represent a number of developers in town and we are working hard. We are working hard. We are putting in offers. We're doing redevelopment projects. Um, the city sent out RFPs for redevelopment projects. And we are so excited because this is a wonderful place to live. We love it here and you know, we wanna preserve as much of our beautiful land and culture that we have, but we also have people that are retiring that are realizing this is really the place they wanna be. So we see it both on the residential side and on the commercial side. So uh, Coralie, I, I'm so glad you brought that up. It's been, um, 
needless to say, a very busy uh, couple of months for uh, growth and development uh, in that industry for sure in our city. And, uh, you know, I, uh, my family's in general contracting, general construction, and, uh, you know, they they have been so lucky to receive some huge bids. You know, Alvaro's d developing uh, bigger, and, and that area is getting wider and wider. And they they've been attached to some of that. There's some uh, uh, bids that they uh, received in the Sawmill District, the Knob Hill District, the, the re revitalization. They've received some bids there, and so it's pretty interesting to see how. Um, land development and then of course the rebuilding of of um the the hotels and the you know that whole redevelopment of of route 66 and stuff so that's been pretty exciting so i'm glad to hear that positive stuff happening it makes a big difference because they filter all into the smaller businesses around that same area and that's what's important so um annabelle you're you're in the middle you're in the mortgage side uh, between these two be, between the commercial and the residential side so you know some of the questions that have been coming in have been really about you know my house is it this at the time should i sell should i buy mortgage interest rates all that stuff so share with us what you guys have been doing the last few months and what do you see coming up in the future okay well it's a great time to purchase it really is and to sell at the same time what we've been seeing is our our market for lending has been phenomenal. Best month ever in April. It is just fantastic. So we're getting a lot of people refinancing because interest rates are great right now. So they're wanting to lower their payments, which is helpful right now in this situation. And John was right. Some are downsizing. Some are like, okay, this house is too big. I need to get into a smaller house. And Coralie is also correct because we are getting a lot of out-of-staters out of coming in to purchase homes here. So all that is playing a factor with us. So we're doing purchases, we're doing refinances. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that during the COVID-19, um, some of the lenders are um, wanting to or are um, having overlays on their lending because they want to make sure that the client still has a job, that um, the forbearance hasn't taken an issue or toll on it. And the forbearance, um, you know, if you can make your mortgage payment, I highly recommend that you do make that mortgage payment. Um, every lender is going to look at the forbearance guidelines differently. Um, you know, make sure that your payments have been, always been made on time. We are we understand hardship, but we also want, un, want to see that everybody picks up the pieces after that. So lenders are going to be looking at credit a little bit differently for now, but there's still plenty of um, loans going around and we just have to be creative when we're lending and give advice and say, you know, you need to work on this a little bit and then we can move forward. So it is, May's also a killer month. So the lending industry is giving loans. So people don't, you know, freak out if you don't, um, if you can try to get a refinance and lower your monthly payment, that's gonna help you during this time. If you can sell your house, we need houses on the market, especially now for the springtime. Um, and one of the things I advise everybody is get pre-approved. Because when you're pre-approved, you're ready to go. Pre-approval means that the loan officer has taken your application, has gotten all your documentation, the file has gone to the underwriter, and all you have to do once you're approved is find a property. And the reason why I say that is when you're out there looking and you want to make a bid, you can make that bid immediately and the seller's going to see that you're pre-approved, not pre-qualified. So you're ready to go. And it just makes life so much easier for everybody. But we're here, we're available. Um, you know, it's strange working from your houses, from the houses now, but um, we still have all this great technology and we can take applications um, electronically. Online applications are, score, are soaring right now. And the, the um, you know, um, being able to upload your documents and send them to your loan officer and your processor. Oh my gosh, that's just been phenomenal right now. So it is a good time to purchase, to refinance. 
So lots of information, lots of good information, and we're going to circle back around to that. But I want to jump over to John, and I want to ask you, so uh, we've heard from from all three of you that, um, you know, inventory is, I guess, what you would call low right now, which I would say is probably a good thing in a thriving economy. However, um, what advice do you have for people that are maybe on the fence of should I be selling my house right now and how do they get the best price for it? I mean, give us some tips, everything from what they should do to prepare their house for sale. And then the big thing is pricing. You know, everybody thinks the house is worth a million dollars. Oh, there's low inventory. We're going to, we're going to price it really high. So walk us through, um, your, your, um, expertise in that area. Absolutely. Now, the first thing you got to want to make sure is you want to call Annabelle or your lender to make sure you have viability. Okay. Um, it's all great to sell a house, but in today's day and age, you know, you need to make sure that you can buy some. If you do sell your house, the last thing we want to do is have you homeless and looking for a rental because rentals are so hard to come by, especially in our town right now. So that's the first thing you want to make sure is contact your lender and find that out. Uh, but if you are looking to sell your property, uh, the second thing you want to ask yourself is, how important do you really need to sell that property? Because we are at the bottom, and again, this is in my opinion, and we have this low inventory, we do have all the new construction, the new builders out there trying to get permits, trying to develop land because they're a little bit behind the ball because they know it's coming. Uh, it may be some time before there's a lot, a lot of uh, inventory hitting our market. So what that means is our pricing is going to continuously go up as new construction hits the market. So if your house is worth... 300,000 today, do you need to sell it? Because if you do, if it's priced right and it looks good, it will sell today. That's the good part, okay? But you're also dealing with the most intelligent buyer that this industry has ever seen. More information is on the internet, is on Google, is the neighborhoods, is the houses down the street. So no longer are you asking your realtor, what's my house worth? Because pretty much you probably know it. Now, regardless if you want to admit to it because you think you have the best house in the neighborhood, because apparently I only list houses uh, who have the best house in the neighborhood, or at least that's what they tell me. But my point is, is that you've got to price it right or it will become stale even in a hot market like this. People don't want a house that's overpriced because they kind of know the industry. So if you're going to list it, make sure you know you have a place to go. You can buy something else. You kind of looked around. Make sure you do price it right. So get with your real estate consultant and don't just speak with a, a realtor who just wants to put a sign in the front yard. Find that realtor who really wants to find and help you put a plan together, a timeline. And the job that that particular realtor is applying for is a long-term relationship, not just the sign in the front, not just let's go look at houses and buy lunch. You put those together and you're gonna be just fine. If you find out that it's not the best time to sell, just because you know the house will sell in today's market, you've got to look at your personal life. You've got to talk to your lender and you've got to make sure that all of those boxes are checked before you go to the next step. Because once you price it right and it looks good, it's going to sell. I've seen multiple offers. I've seen things sell before. Once a sign hits up, I've seen you know people getting fighting over a particular home. And, and that's going to happen if you do your job right. So that's really interesting. You, you brought up something that really jumped out at me, which is people think, oh, wow, this is great. You know, the market's hot right now. I'm going to sell my house. But um, and the only reason I know that is because this has crossed my brain a time or two. But where do you go? <laughs> so that's great that you want to downsize or go into a bigger space. But where do you go? So I think that that's super important that you get with your agent and you probably look at what your plan is. I mean, if you're moving out of state or something like that, but if you're looking to stay in the local area and you want a different house, there is not a lot of inventory. I get a little obsessed at looking at people's houses a lot. Uh, the inside, you know, decorator type stuff. And I'm realizing, wow, the inventory is less and less and less when you're doing searches. And we're going to see a real unique phenomenon happen. Think about what just happened. None of our lifetime, maybe not in the history as the world ever shut down. OK, yeah. that's going to affect our mindset. The normal is <laughs> no longer the normal anymore because we don't know what that's going to look like. You're going to see people East Coast, West Coast and congested cities that people wanted to be in are going to be afraid of it. They're going to start looking at places like New Mexico, where we have the fifth largest state with only 680,000 people in our major areas. And they're not condensed. We're going to see people in Albuquerque wanting to move to more <laughs> urban living 
uh, suburban living versus urban living because they want that space. They don't need to be so close to everybody around anymore. The mindset of what's going on globally is going to change drastically, and we got to keep an open mind to that. So that way us as the professionals can really kind of help shape that because once that opens up, the virus ain't gone. The, the world's opened up, but the virus ain't gone, and people know that. So I've already bought hundreds of masks because from here on out for the next few years, when I show up and meet a new client, I'm going to offer it. You know, I mean, professionality, I'm sure. caring about you. I'm not just going to show you how there's just going to be a lot of new, new, new things that are going to be happening. Yeah, absolutely. What a, what a great segue um, to move over to Coralie, <clears throat> excuse me, because you brought up a point. One of that point is we we've seen here in Albuquerque, a way that people are living differently. And I know that, um, you know, uh, Cora, Coralie, we've talked to you uh, many times about this new way of living where they have the retail shops below and they have the, the townhouses slash apartment style on top. And I know you've been a part of many of those developments. So share with us, cause it's new. You know, Albuquerque is not used to living like New York where you live on top and shop downstairs. So this is kind of all new. And so let, let's hear a little bit about that. I think it's super exciting. So this is my personal prediction of how we see the future turning out. Um, I see retail growing. We have gone through this phase where retail kind of was changing, very much changing. We moved away from department stores over to big box stores, small boutique shops. So the beautiful thing of working from home is that you don't have to commute. So that's great for the environment. Um, and it saves you a lot of time. It saves you hours in the morning, hours in the afternoon, which is time that you can go to a restaurant, you can go to a brewery, you can go shopping, you can do stuff with your kids. People are enjoying the great outdoors. They're going hiking. You know, we're, we are really finding a quality of life that we may not have had before with hustle and bustle and rushing around everywhere. So if we can do Zoom meetings instead of in-person meetings and our stress goes down, what we found is that people are 25% more efficient working from home. And so a lot of the office space that we were using before may be redone as apartments or live workspace. You know, people may have a nice apartment in what used to be an office building in Uptown by the mall. It hasn't happened yet, but that's kind of the direction that I see. I see a greater quality of life and I see people really enjoying their life to the fullest because they have more opportunity. So um, that's that's really good information. What what I love is for those of you that don't know Coralie and haven't had the pleasure of spending time to get to know her, she does not wear a watch. That's the first thing. <laughs> and so uh, she's got a great story about that. But it really does talk about exactly, it, uh, it really does lend to the point that we are living a different life and it's not so much timely as it was anymore. And work hours can be shortened and extended based on you know, being at home or working from a remote location. What are you seeing out there? And what are you saying to businesses that do need a location? Because you still have the businesses that, you know, are, are in the in the space of retail and or they need um, traffic in. Um, so, so what are we doing right now during this time? And, and how are you handling um, those um, clients? Believe it or not, I'm still seeing a lot of success. So I just had a Zumba studio open up at um, Elvato. And while they can't open for classes, they've got their fabulous smoothies and she's posting all of them. People are coming in individually. Um, we're seeing where classes have moved online. So as soon as this is over, people will be able to get back to their exercise classes, going to the gym and so forth. Um, but Albuquerque has been absolutely amazing. Over the last year in commercial real estate, we've leased 2.3 million square feet of space. So we are really ready for the pent up demand that's gonna come. And that doesn't say, I'm not talking large gatherings. I'm not talking big concerts. I'm talking about being able to shop, having one-on-one -on -one experiences. I went jewelry shopping um, yesterday and I had a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a jeweler who made the jewelry. And it was so rich, it was so fabulous and very safe. And so I think we're gonna see a lot of people really enjoying smaller, smaller gatherings and, and more quality time. And across the board, that's gonna be nice for our boutique stores, for our restaurants. Um, we may have our tables a little further apart than we did before. And I think that's okay. 
we may not always go up and hug everybody, but we're going to be just as happy to see them and wave and, you know, enjoy a conversation from with a little more social distance. So do you guys notice we, we had a, a couple of questions that are coming in, but do you, have you guys noticed and I'm going to kind of mesh them together. Um, <clears throat> are you noticing, uh, let's see. There's a trust issue, I guess, that we would want to say uh, when you're not actually out meeting and doing the hand to hand shake and like John said, the lunch and getting to know people, we're, we're living life differently now. So there, there's a trust issue that comes when working with your finance <clears throat> mortgage company or your um your real estate agent. And so the question is kind of being, you know, that we're using virtual tours and video conferencing, how are you guys feeling and what is your advice to creating that perfect relationship uh, with with um, your clientele? So I'm gonna start with Annabelle because we're talking money, we're talking private documents, we're talking, you know, that type of stuff that's important to people. So, so tell us a little bit about that. Okay, my experience so far is there's not, um, you know, I don't want to deal with you because I'm not in your office. Um, because we do have the Zoom, we have everything else, and we're talking to them. Um, another thing that, um, so I haven't experienced that as of yet. Um, another thing we're offering at Finance of America is we're offering e-closings. And actually, I had a client who works for the state that was so excited, she goes, Thank you, thank you, thank you, because she's not leaving her house right now. And all her documentation is sent to me via email and you know secured links and so forth like that. And she was kind of worried about the e-closing. I'm like, yep, we have e-closing. And the title companies are also taking preliminary measurements um, to make sure that you know only one person's in the closing. And it's actually not a bad thing. I haven't had the experience of someone saying, you know, because I'm not in your office, I can't trust you. So that's not been an issue here. So John, you're probably doing a lot of virtual uh, relationship building in in your uh, in this global uniqueness that we are living in. That's my new word. I'm done. It's like hashtagging everywhere. I, I, I love it. Um, but what what are some what are some advice that you can give? Because there's a lot of real estate agents out of there that maybe aren't doing the volume that your uh, company is used to doing. Um, there's also people that are looking to find an agent. And so how do you build that rapport in this? day and age and even into the future because like you said this stuff's going to be going on for a while well believe it or not in our industry you're doing good today not because of what you're doing today you're doing good today because of what you've done in the past yes. the relationships have already been there you know yes when you do get the calls if you do get the leads and you get them transferred over you got to still build the relationship as business as usual like we've been doing for 23 years you know, so a lot hasn't changed in that sense. Now, I do come across a few of the people who uh, took the house off the market because they didn't want, you know, people coming in. They were afraid. And, and that's OK. We'll support them and we'll do, you know, as they please. And I'm not going to try to fight them or, or object to that. I want everybody to feel comfortable because we'll take care of it when you feel comfortable. But it is business as usual. I do have a couple of people who are moving from California. My goodness, I've been in this 23 years. When I first got in, I remember the old guy telling me, you know what, if a guy from California would see this house, he'd give me $5 million for this house. And it just never happened. Well, guess what? These last few years, it's happening. And I do have a lot of FaceTime um, uh, showings that I am doing from people from California. They're willing to get rid of it. They can get their houses done there. They can get those, you know, job of permission to keep their job, but work from New Mexico, which is a big thing that we all need to talk about. And that's another reason why New Mexico is going to blow up. They're saying, show me the house. So we have to go ahead and make sure and update them and acclimate them to our economic development, the North, South, West, East, our different quadrants, prize, schools, return. You know, we got to make sure and educate them on, on all our wonderful assets that we have here. And then we narrow it down to the house. And then from there, I just set up appointments and I'll FaceTime them. I'll FaceTime them from the street so that they can start seeing the drive in to the house, the trees, make sure there's no cars that are broken down on the side. You know, These are certain things that you don't see on Google Earth, but that's what a real estate professional and a consultant does. We gotta make sure that they get a feel because we have the technology to the front door 
walking in up on top. And as we're doing it, we're describing the, the smells, the senses, the wind chill factor. I mean, you really want to make it as real as possible, as best as we can, and then take them through the house. So I've seen that bit of difference. But with the exception of that, it's still checking on our clients, not trying to sell them anything. We're not salespeople anymore. Right. Checking on them, making sure that if they need something picked up, we're in the front lines. You know, I don't know how that happened, but we really are. We're out there still. And what's going on? I'm not trying to sell you anything. We've got a team. We'll go ahead and do so. And it's just us doing what we can helping. So you guys are like consultants, you know, like you said, it, it's very different in your consulting and providing the advice that they might need. And I love what you said in the very beginning when you said you start that that video from way back and, you know, bring them into the house because that's really showing the unique culture that we have here. We, we are, we've done so many um, events over the past few years here at the Hispano Chamber and we have yet to bring people in from DC, New York, California, Washington, you know, everywhere they're coming from all over the four corners, Florida, and they're saying, wow, I've never been around culture, like this is crazy. And so it's, it's I think our best asset that we have here in our city and in our history, our, our, our beautiful landscape. So I think that that's a, a really cool little tidbit for all you real estate agents that are listening out there. If I was an agent, I would be doing just that. And I would be starting way back and I would be sharing that culture all the way up to that door because that's what creates a home. Yeah. So Cora Lee, you're in a, you're in a, the same, but you know, a little bit different. What are you doing with your commercial uh, clients and how are you uh, working with them uh, within creating that uh, virtual relationship, if you will, um, since it's not the same. We, we can't run out and have a beer together <laughs> and, and have lunch together. And, and though I'm all for that, I still want that piece to come back. I'm learning, you know, virtually, but I, I miss everybody. So I'm, you know, looking for that. True story. I had a client fly in from Portland last week. And he went to the whole hog, which has a very delicious sandwich, but he had to take it out and eat it, you know, on the street. Cause you can't sit down. And he said he felt like he was homeless eating his sandwich on the street in front of the properties that we were making offers on. Um, so yes, it has changed very much, but in commercial, we have done a lot of long distance work already. So we have buyers that are coming from out of state often. And, um, we're kind of doing more, a lot more phone and email, which it hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, but we can meet people in person with our mask and gloves, you know, and say hello and show a property. And I'm finding that the owners of the commercial properties that I'm showing are also on the same page. They've got their masks, their gloves, people are, you know, got their Lysol wipes, they're keeping their surfaces clean. And we can still joke around. We're just standing a little further apart. We're still able to show our properties and we're still going to see the growth. I really feel like we're going to have a lot of pent up demand. I feel like everybody's enjoying this break. We're really happy to have quality time to get our houses in order. You know, Home Depot has long lines because we're all doing our home repairs that were long overdue. As, as a country, I do. I feel like people are, re are rested. And when they come back to work, they're going to be able to have be full swing, have new ideas, have new energy, and we're going to have a new vibrancy. So that's what I'm looking forward to. So yes, we've been busy just as much as John said, we have all been busy in real estate. And I think we're going to continue to see a very nice upswing in New Mexico. And one of the big things that we noticed in the Great Recession was that there were winners and losers. But look at how Starbucks took off. That cup of coffee just becomes so important to you um, when you may, you know, be jobless at the moment. And Apple, Apple really took off. I think we're going to see right here in New Mexico is that we are a very quality place. And once tourism uh, comes back, we're going to see a lot of tourism within the U.S. because people may not be safe to leave the U.S. So on all fronts, commercials coming back very nicely. Like I said, there are winners and losers. I think we'll have a little bit of loss on our office space, but I think we're going to have the gains in other areas. So much information. I love it. It's really nice to chat with you guys to get all of this out because believe it or not, those tidbits of information mean so much when somebody's asking you a conversation and, you know, here at the chamber, we can't be experts in everything. You know, that's not what we do. And so we reach out to you guys 
um, in all the different industries and and we work with that and I, I save tidbits of information that's such good info that I'm making notes on because I think uh, the one thing that I've learned from this panel right here is um, positivity staying positive uh, looking always looking up and forward um i know that maybe the real estate market wasn't as hit as some of the other um day-to-day -day businesses unfortunately but i think that that's a that's a little sunshine on the horizon because that lets us know that there is people out there that can support the community and support the ecosystem here in in our city as we start to reopen and rebuild for those businesses that are suffering so i think it would be kind of fun because it is mother's day weekend for you guys to share with us just a, something a little fun just take us out take us out on a, on a fun friday so um annabelle i'm going to start with you share us uh, share something about uh, what you're going to do this weekend if you are, are spending time with your mom or honoring anybody that's important to you uh, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, my mother is from northern New Mexico. I'm from Las Vegas, New Mexico. Yep. <laughs> so, um, and bless her heart, she's 85 years old. And she's telling us, when can I go out? And we're like, mom, you're home safe. So we're all going to gather in her front porch, which is pretty huge. And we're going to have a little barbecue, but we're still staying our difference. So I am looking forward to that so much. And I just wish I could just give her a hug, but just seeing her is fulfilling enough. And I'm very blessed that she's still alive. So that's what yes. I'm going to do. Yes, you are very blessed. And woohoo for Northern New, New Mexico. Yes. <laughs> that's my home. I love oh, you guys. Oh, great. Great. We're we're like Taos Pinasco. We're all up yeah. in that area. So any anything north, and it's beautiful right now. Oh yeah, it's just gorgeous. I mean, yeah. even if you're not going to see anybody. I mean, northern New Mexico is a great drive, and and, and it allows for social distancing. So it is. And I'm just you know, happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. And just think positive. If you think positive, it's gonna work. It will work. So you know, everybody, it's gonna get better and better and better. So thank you so much. Great advice. John, what are what about you? What are your plans for the weekend? <laughs> well, you know, Mother's Day is a very special day, especially if you still have your mother and have been blessed with her. Um, all the great mothers out there are like walking angels on earth because, you know, they're responsible and they carry such a big load. And, you know, I'm just so lucky to have my mother. Now, I have a young mother. You know, she's more like my big sister <laughs> and uh, she works for me. So chances are I might give her the day off. I'm not sure yet. Uh, <laughs> I might send I her a that. Zoom recording and give her the day off. So I haven't debated. I've debated on that. <laughs> but I think what my mom really wants is uh, really wants to see me, me and her grandkids. And I think we're going to do a nice little video for her. We're really trying to be good and, and keep away. Uh, you know, not just social distancing, but literally kind of stay away just because we're all dirty carriers of this craziness that's happening. So I just don't want my mom to get sick. Uh, but I think we're going to do a cool little video with all the grandkids and send it to her and just make sure she understands how much she's missed and loved. Wonderful. I love it. I love it. Uh, Coralie, I've had the, I've had the pleasure. So please tell us about, um, what you plan to do this weekend. I'm super interested. <laughs> Well, we, of course, started on Cinco de Mayo. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, my mom has a big back patio. Uh, my sister, um, you know, she's made, whipped up some margaritas. I made enchiladas. My mom made beans. And we all put our chairs about six feet apart. Um, and she wore a mask. But um, sure. we had Mexican music and we wore great big hats and we just had a really wonderful time. And that was the beginning of Mother's Day. So it's going to fast forward. On Sunday, my sister and I are putting together a backyard patio set for her. So I bought her these great big cobalt blue vases. Oh. And we're going to do an outdoor living space for her Mother's Day. And then her birthday is on the 13th. So we get a whole week to celebrate. <laughs> oh, wow. 
we it's milk it. it. It's yeah, it's like month. Christmas. It's her whole month. <laughs> Tell mama I said hello. We definitely miss seeing all of you guys, you know. So before we leave, I'd like to, to leave with a little bit of a takeaway uh, for the audience about what you guys see upcoming. What, you know, any advice that you can give to your market, to your target, to your client, uh, because they, people are asking, what should I do right now? So, John, we're going to have you start. You know, <laughs> The biggest advice I've been giving everybody is keep your routine, as challenging as that is. You know, it takes 90 days to create or to make a bad habit or a good habit. And that's about the time we're going to be ultimately disrupted during this, you know, uniqueness that we're all experiencing. So my point is, is don't pick up bad habits and continue to live just because of the changes that are going on. Don't start drinking at four in the afternoon every night, watching Netflix and ordering out, you know, food. And because before you know, it, you're going to be 20 pounds overweight, unmotivated, because it's going to be a bad habit. If you're used to waking up at five in the morning, do it. Explore, go for your walks, get to know your dogs, get to know your kids. You know, it, it start keeping that routine because this is a small period of time, guys. It's a small period of time. And the last thing we want to do is develop this negative habits in our lifestyle because it's going to be so hard to undo later on. So I've been telling everybody, stay with your same routine. It may be different, but try to keep it and don't develop bad habits. Just be aware of what you're doing. Great advice. I just took some notes on that. Miss Annabelle, what advice do you have for your clients or any future clients? Actually, I listen to a Minute with Maxwell every morning. Uh, he's a great advisor. And he spoke about a statement of strength this morning. A pessimist is one who makes difficulties of his own opportunities. An optimist is one who makes opportunities of his own difficulties. So one of the things he mentioned is there's two sales shoe salesmen went to a developing country. Upon arrival, they realized that no one wore shoes. The first salesman telegraphed home and said, don't send any shoes. No one wears shoes over here. I'm going home tomorrow. The second salesperson said, oh my, send me as many shoes as you can, as fast as you can. No one wears shoes here. So do you understand? Just always think positive. It's the best advice I can give everybody. It will work out. That's it. Wow. Very, that's, it's profound because it's opportunity. And how do you take that opportunity and turn it into something uh, big? And that's, that's that lesson for sure. Miss Coralie. Shannon, I'm going to ask you to repeat the question. Yeah, no, oh, okay. No, I said that's profound. That was a, that's a big deal. And I think that uh, it's uh, important that we take those lessons and, and realize there's opportunity in everything. So Ms. Corley, what advice do you have for uh, clients or potential clients or just people in general about how to, to get through the next, well, I hate to say a few months because it could be longer, but in the future. How to get through it? Um, yeah, advice. Obviously, you right? I love, I love the analogy of the shoes. I got lost in it. <laughs> We've been having such a good time in the shelter at home that I'm really looking forward to more shelter at home. Um, I do miss the beach. So I love Annabelle's background. I'm going to get me one of those, but, um, my advice would be stay safe. You know, obviously I love what John said about respecting his mom so much that that they don't you know they're wanting to keep her safe in every way possible and so send flowers you know you know keep it up with the amazon gifts we probably get a delivery here but i'm really grateful for that um and keep supporting our local businesses our local restaurants that have pickup orders keep supporting those local businesses any of our restaurants where you can pick up keep doing that um, I'm also shopping more local in terms of grocery stores. You know, if we can shop local on any level, let's keep doing that. So stay safe, shop local, and enjoy every minute of time that you're with your family. Yeah, come on. Awesome. Yeah, bring, bring, bring them into the frame. Oh, look at <laughs> I recognize that face. <laughs> I work on a uh, Hispano chamber. Oh, cool. <laughs> 
years. We're hoping to sell you some real estate. <laughs> well, you guys, it's been a blast getting to sit and chat. I think there's a lot of information on here. Um, again, uh, for you guys, this will be posted on the ahcnm.org website under the New Mexico Mutual uh, Small Business Series under the real estate um webinar you can go back and watch it at your leisure of course it's going to be on youtube and and social media uh, for everybody that missed it uh, you can go back and watch it there uh, i want to i want to close up with just you know a couple of things we talked about and uh one of the things that was really important is you know find um a, a I, I kind of, I guess I would say interview a little bit, uh, but take your time and find yourself an agent that's going to work for you and in the best interest of you. Uh, right now, the market is completely different than it was a few years ago. So it's important to find somebody that works for you. If you're looking into commercial or you're looking at, uh, to do some, uh, get, you know, you're, you're looking for tenant or tenant improvement type stuff, Carly uh, can definitely walk you through that. And if you guys are looking to refinance or get information on mortgages, Annabelle is your guy. And of course, if you are looking to buy or sell a home, then John Lopez is your man. So you can find all of them on our page at the ahcnm.com um, and under membership in the directory, we'll put their information information on this listing as well within the Facebook page uh, and they all have Facebook pages for their companies as well so it won't be hard to reach out with questions or if you would like to begin that conversation how to do work with them in the future so today we we learned some good stuff we learned that routine from John is a great way to stay focused and focus forward. Uh, don't get out of that routine, whatever that is. So um, I love that advice. And we've been, we've been doing that here, John. We've been focused on routine for the past two months. So we're good there. Um, I love the stay positive. And it is hard sometimes to stay positive right now. It's been tough, but we try to be that positive for every phone call that comes in and every client that needs us. And we're gonna continue to stay positive um, by sharing with, with people like you, um, this panel today. And then I love the support local, Coralie. That is so important. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do our daily flash brief today and it's gonna be centered around a great Mother's Day and how to celebrate by supporting local at the same time. So we're excited about that initiative with the city and I love that we're going to close up with stay safe I think that everybody has their way of social distancing their way of whether they wear masks or what it, whatever it is that they're doing but remember to be cognizant of the people around you and who you come into contact with because you're going to come into contact with someone right after that so stay safe everybody have a wonderful wonderful beautiful weekend in this amazing duke city weather new mexico weather that we have and have a wonderful mother's day and we will see you guys on monday for the next webinar with new mexico mutual thank you guys and have a thank great you. Bye. bye guys thank you ladies bye 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 thank you